Greetings, everybody. All right, we're going to continue our lesson on section 5.2 in which we're talking about perpendicular bisectors. But now what we're going to focus on is the perpendicular bisectors that you can make out of the three sides, each of the three sides of a triangle. So the goal is that you will use properties based on the concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. So there's some definitions we're going to need to talk about. You don't know what concurrency means quite yet. You've not looked at a triangle and all of its perpendicular bisectors before. You've only looked at perpendicular bisectors of a single segment. Well, we're going to do both of those things. And I want to start off with that definition of what concurrency is or what concurrent lines are. And simply when we're talking about concurrent lines, what we're referring to is when three lines or more intersect in a certain way. Now, you know that anytime two lines intersect, they intersect at a point. But what happens? What are the different ways that three or more lines can intersect? Well, I want to draw a couple different pictures for you. Um, one possibility that you can get from trying to have three lines intersect is that they just intersect at three different points. So you could have this kind of situation right there. All right? Now, there are other situations other than the one I'm about to show you right here as well. But it turns out... Another scenario is that three lines, whenever they intersect, all intersect at exactly the same point. And this is what I'm trying to talk about today. Whenever you have three or more lines that intersect at a single point, that set of lines is, are referred to as concurrent lines. And of course, then, if you have three or more lines that do not intersect at a single point, you would say that those are not concurrent to one another. Okay, well, we'll come back to that thought here in a moment. Let's talk about the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. What I'd like to do now is show you what happens whenever you draw all three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, meaning you draw the perpendicular bisector of each of the three sides of a triangle. Now, you'll recall that in order to draw a perpendicular bisector, you have to draw a line through the midpoint of a segment that is perpendicular to that segment. So for instance here would be the perpendicular bisector of the bottom side of this triangle. All right, I got the midpoint. Then I'm going to draw a perpendicular line through that midpoint. Yeah, I'm going to fix that a little bit. There we go. So that line is both perpendicular to that side of the triangle and it divides it in half as I've marked right there. And I want to go ahead and draw the perpendicular bisectors of each of the other two sides of the triangle as well. Here's the other pair of midpoints. And then these are the perpendicular bisectors. I'm just going to pause and draw them both. Like so. Alright, so two more perpendicular bisectors. All right, drawing starts looking rather complicated. Here's really the point that I'm trying to make at the moment, though. Whenever you draw the three perpendicular bisectors for a triangle, they always end up being concurrent with one another. Remember we talked about three or more lines intersect at a single point being concurrent? Perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are always concurrent to one another. And as such, there are some special properties that this triangle will have which I'll explain shortly. Let's write down the important information though. One of the important things that I need you to know right now is that the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are concurrent. Okay, and then another thing I want you to know is that the point of concurrency for the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle has a special name and it's called the circumcenter of the triangle. All right, there you go. Point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors is called the circumcenter of the triangle. And there's a special property about the circumcenter of the triangle, which I was referring to earlier, that I want to describe to you right now by comparing it to what we've already learned about points that are on perpendicular bisectors of a segment. Let me draw a picture of a perpendicular bisector that's not part of a triangle. You'll recall, I hope, that any time a point 
is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment as this point R is for the perpendicular bisector of segment PQ, that point is equidistant from the endpoints of that segment bisected by the perpendicular bisector. So in other words, the distance from P to R and the distance from Q to R are equivalent just because R is on the perpendicular bisector of segment PQ. Well, that same thing applies in triangles. Let's label some of the points in this triangle real quick. I'm just calling this triangle ABC, and then I label the circumcenter as point X. And since X is on the perpendicular bisector of segment AC right here, that means that X has to be the same distance from A as it is from C. Correct? That's just applying the perpendicular bisector theorem. Similarly, since X, uh, let me mark this last thing real quick, sorry. All right, this distance equals this distance. All right. And then since X is on the perpendicular bisector of segment BC, that means that the distance from X to C is the same as the distance from X to B. So this distance equals this one right here. And it should follow, I hope fairly easy for you, to recognize that, that distance from X to B is also equal to the distance from X to A. In other words, those three segments that I drew in blue are all the same length. All right, now this brings us to the last thing that I need you to know about the circumcenter, the place where the perpendicular bisectors intersect in a triangle. And that's that the circumcenter of the triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. I'm going to write that down now. All right, so there you go. That's what I'm wanting you to know about perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. Well, a couple other small related facts, but that's the main thing. They intersect the circumcenter, and the circumcenter is equidistant from the three vertices of the triangle. All right, well, what are those couple other things? One of the things I'd like you to know is why the circumcenter of the triangle is called the circumcenter of a triangle. And it's actually a pretty cool thing. Remember I told you that the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the three vertices of a triangle? And anytime you have a set of points that are all equidistant from the same point, you can draw a circle through those points centered at the point that they're equidistant from. Okay? Um, the circumcenter of a triangle, it turns out, is the center of a circle that would go through is three vertices. And I'll just illustrate that to you really quickly by drawing the perpendicular bisectors of this triangle and showing you that they intersect at the center of the circle that I've drawn. All right, I'll pause and do this. There you go, I drew the three perpendicular bisectors. I didn't have this point centered exactly the way I wanted it to, but that's fine. You get the idea. They intersected at a point that happened to be the center of a circle that went through each of its vertices. So circumcenter, the circum part comes from the circle that you can draw through the vertices of the triangle based on this being the center of that circle. Really cool application there. All right, now, where is the circumcenter is a question that you'll be expected to be able to answer. And it turns out that the location of the circumcenter of a triangle is different depending on what type of triangle it is in regards to its angle measures, okay? Whether it's scalene, isosceles, Equilateral doesn't matter so much as whether it's acute, obtuse, or a right triangle. I'm going to go ahead and draw the perpendicular bisectors of all three sides of each of these triangles. And then when I'm asking where the location is, what I'm really asking is whether the circumcenter would be inside of the triangle, outside of the triangle, or whether it would be some point that's on one of the sides of the triangle. Okay, well, you'll see which case is correct for each of these types of triangles. Now every drawing I've shown you so far has been an acute triangle and you've already seen that the circumcenter for an acute triangle is inside of the triangle and I've just shown you again. Now let's look at the obtuse triangles. And with obtuse triangles you can see that the three perpendicular bisectors intersect outside of the triangle. In fact, they intersect opposite from the obtuse angle, if you will. Now my software that I'm using limits me, but 
this is still the center of the, of the circle that would go through the three vertices of the triangle. You can kind of imagine how this point is the same distance from this vertex, this vertex, and this vertex. That hopefully looks like it anyway. And then, oh, I didn't mean to write the word up too, so I meant to write outside. All right, circumcenter is outside of the triangle for an obtuse triangle. And then for a right triangle, here you go. With a right triangle, turns out the circumcenter is always the, on the triangle. And more specifically, it is the midpoint of the hypotenuse. All right, only one more thing I want to do with circumcenters and perpendicular bisectors and so forth. Hopefully you're following along with all the information I've been giving you so far. What we haven't done yet is any kind of solving of problems using circumcenter, and that's what I'd like to do right now. All right, I've given you a picture, and in the picture, it's, well, the directions for the picture, it says that the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle are shown in blue. And so you see I've drawn the perpendicular bisector of segment AB, the perpendicular bisector of segment BC and the perpendicular bisector of segment AC all in blue. And maybe it's kind of hard to read because this is a G and that's a 6 and they look like one another, but this is point G is the circumcenter of that triangle. And I'm wanting you to find the indicated measure. We're going to use all the things we know about perpendicular bisectors and the circumcenter in order to answer these three or to find these three measurements. First of all, let's start with segment BD, all right, which is right here. You might wonder, well, I've got three measurements here. I know how long AD is, I know how long EG is, and I know how long CG is. Which one of those could I use to find the length BD? All right, well, keep in mind that these blue segments are perpendicular bisectors, right? And the bisector part is the most relevant thing to this problem because that means that point D is the midpoint of segment AB. And if point D is the midpoint of segment AB, then that would tell you that BD is equal to nine because AD is equal to nine. All right, there we go. No problem there, I hope. Second measurement that I want you to find is the distance from B to G. All right, so from here to there. Now, I want you to realize what this distance is. This distance from B to G is the distance from one of the vertices of the triangle to the circumcenter. And what was it we said about the distance from the circumcenter to the three vertices of a triangle? We said that the circumcenter is equidistant from those three vertices. And so that would tell us then that each of these three distances in red are equal to one another. And so since the distance from the circumcenter to C is 10, the distance from the circumcenter to either of the other two vertices would also have to be 10. Okay, and finally then I'm asking you to find the distance from C to E right there, which at first seems impossible. I don't know the distance from B to E, so I can't just use the fact that E is the midpoint of segment BE to help me out, though that's true. And what are we going to do with any of the other measurements? These 9s, these 10s, the 6 right there? Well, one more thing about, that's true about perpendicular bisectors that we haven't used yet is the fact that they are perpendicular to the sides of the triangle, aren't they? And so that angle that I just drew, angle CEG, is a right angle. And I want you to focus on this triangle in particular because this is really what's going to be relevant now. This triangle, CEG, has to be a right triangle, doesn't it? Now, we haven't used this a lot this year, but you know the Pythagorean theorem, and you know that it can be used to find the length of a missing side of a right triangle if you know the other two sides. So, if we just call that length CE, say, X, then we can make an equation that says that X squared plus 6 squared is equal to 10 squared. All right, it's always the sum of the squares of the legs, right here and right there, that equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse. 
And you can solve for x that way then. So we'll have x squared plus 36 equals 100. x squared then is 64. And then technically, in algebra class, we would say that x is positive or negative 8. But we can't let x be a negative value right there. So we'll just take the square root, the positive square root of 64 and say that x is equal to 8. And that then is the length of CE. Okay. So you know what a perpendicular bisector of a triangle is. You know that the three perpendicular bisectors are concurrent and they intersect at what's called the circumcenter. And you know the circumcenter of the triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.